Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Starting out today, we've got some boutique guitars. About nine months ago, we featured one of these Ukrainian guitars on my channel because we had initially planned to do a cool giveaway, but then the whole Russia-Ukraine thing happened, their workshop got destroyed, they had to move that around. So that video, instead of trying to focus on selling you guys custom orders and other things that they're working on, they decided to switch it more into fundraising mode, which was apparently a nice big success, so thank you everyone for that. But about two months ago, I had gotten a message from one of the brothers that the other two guitars that they were going to send me are about ready. Ready. So it seems like they're up and running, ready for some custom orders. So they sent me these as, I would assume, a consignment type sale. I'm not sure if I'm technically considered an authorized dealer, but they're going to sell these two new custom guitars through me and offer their full limited warranty, which you can check out here on the screen. They're not going to cover fret wear and other things that you do to the guitar, but if the neck starts warping, they're going to have your back. But if you happen to have missed that last episode, this was a company that was started by two brothers over in Ukraine. They're boutique level high-end guitars. I was really impressed with the first one that they sent me. They offer three main different body shapes from the Soothsayer, which is kind of your S-type guitar. You've got the Smith, which is kind of like a Les Paul meets PRS. And then you've got the really cool Jupiter, which is like a Jaguar Jazz Master mix-up. And they've got some other variations in between. So if you're interested in anything else that they're selling, I might be able to help you or reach out directly to them on their website. So let's go ahead and see what they built me this time we're going to start with this so we kind of had an interesting purple meets red burst last time but i told him let's make the les paul a little bit more traditionally because some guys thought that one was just a little bit too out there so they came up with a beautiful natural one here and oh wow, this one is just as light as that last one. I had reviewed my last video on it because I just needed a little bit of a refresher on how they did that last. And I remember saying it was like a really light chambered out guitar and yeah, it definitely has that very light feel to it. Now, not only are these things beautiful, I mean, look at that flame top, but we also have the crazy flamed edges here. You've got the flame on the back. Looks like we're going for a two piece this time. Extra active. <laughs> I like that, that's cool. And of course, you also get the figuring on the neck, because why not? Oh, and in case you missed it, the binding is actually done up in wood, too. So that is all flamed maple as well. And then you have like that walnut layer in between. That way it looks extra fancy. I mean, yeah, wow. This thing comes to life in person. I forgot just how nice the woods that they use on this thing is. Now, if you're wondering what this is, that's the mahogany core, because that's how a 1976 The Les Paul was made. Check out this video if you need to learn more about that. It's got the mahogany core body with the maple top and all the maple surrounding everywhere. And it looks like we're using like a rosewood and or an ebony to cap off the hard to bend over areas. That's another vintage spec that I thought was cool. But we've still got that purple heart going up and down the fretboard. And of course, we still have the golden frets. Then our headstock definitely looks a little bit different this time with the whole natural finish. And we've still got our little volute bump back here. But these are kind of like the first production prototypes, like that first one was meant for me, right? But now that we have this natural, I think next time I would suggest to them to use a maple body, because I think that'd be cool to see additional flame figuring right there as well. So have to let me know your thoughts on this color. Do you like it? Would you rather them use a different body wood so you don't have this area? I kind of like it. It's quirky. But my favorite thing about this one has to be the edges. That is just ridiculously going on. I like that. I'm just a fan of really nice figured woods. And that's exactly what this has. So that was natural. Now let's check out what other color they gave us. You guys know me. I told them to do wine red. Now, I think this one works better with the black hardware that they've got going on here because I had suggested to maybe go cream on that other one, but they said, unfortunately, their supplier just doesn't have that. But this just has a completely different vibe to it. That's nice. Yep, I think if I was going to pick one, I would go with this because it does something completely different that that other one does. That one's really calling you to the top, but this one calls you to the natural maple binding along the edges. It's still got all the cool flame figuring and everything, but the wine red finish definitely helps kind of obscure that a little bit from far away, all the while making this pop. And I feel like the headstock works a little bit better with this finish too, but I'll be curious to hear your guys' thoughts on that. It also obscures this area a little bit. Of course, you've got your truss rod wheel right here. And I forgot to mention the nut. You can check out the full review and demo if you want to learn all about these guitars. But I always found this kind of interesting, how you can individually set the height. 
I would not offer to consign these guitars for these guys if I didn't think they were quality instruments. I had so many offers on that last one. I did eventually end up selling it, which I'm kind of regretful about because it was a very nice gift. But when everybody's like, hey, I want it. I want it now. Here's all the money. It's like, okay. So that was kind of a proof of concept as well that there is a market for these boutique guitars out there. So if you're interested in these cool custom Valiant Smiths, collector's editions as they call them, you can check them out on my website or we're also going to be putting these on reverb. So those were the main features for tonight's episode. I just got a couple of other stories. We've already seen these guitars before, so feel free to click off if that's not your style. But I picked up a couple of more Slash guitars for my inventory. And one of these has kind of an interesting story as to why I had to get it. Again, because somebody changed their mind. So I had recently just made this video right here, buying all the current day Slash models. And the last Gibson to sell was the Anaconda Burst. Not because it wasn't the most pretty, it's just the other ones spoke to people and they sold quicker. But at the very end, that's the way it always goes. There's always two guys fighting over it. Because I received the first inquiry, he was saying he was gonna go look at a reissue that was local to him, because he's up in Alaska, right? There's not too many guitars that he can find. So he picked that up. And then in the meantime, I made that whole Guitar Center trade where I took somebody's basically store return credit gift card as partial payment to get that Nighthawk and then that Nighthawk review was actually quite a lot of fun. I don't regret doing that, but please don't offer me your $50 gift cards for stuff. That was a one-time thing just because Guitar Center had something that I felt there was just a little bit of meat left on the bone and I wanted to review that model anyways. So if you have a substantial gift card that might work for something that's been sitting in my inventory a little bit, maybe then, but not the stuff that's fresh usually. But anyways, he bought that reissue he ended up not liking it. Now he's selling it and he wanted to get the Anaconda Burst that had just been sold slash traded away. So I was like, all right, buddy, I might be able to get you another one. Let me see what I can do. Uh-oh. Oops, you guys aren't supposed to see that one yet. The Gibson Garage had the strangest, weirdest Les Paul custom with crazy inlays, custom finish. I couldn't pass that one up. All right, let's go ahead and see what is inside this case here. We'll have to fish out where that other case is later. Inside here is a beautiful November Burst Slash model. I thought this one had a pretty top. It has a very dark border to it, but what made it so special that I had to pick this particular one up, despite just being a production level guitar, is look at that fretboard. It's so rosy and dark, it's fantastic. When I think of a great rosewood fretboard, it's something pretty similar to this, or just completely dark. So that is a very nice find on a cool Slash model. Although this one does have a very interesting S scratch over here on the side. <laughs> you can't feel it, but it's definitely a little bit of an eyesore. But sometimes you just have to learn to live with a few small cosmetic blemishes to get everything else you want. But is this the one we're looking for to continue our story? Nope, this is the AFD that I thought was absolutely gorgeous too. But have you guys ever noticed how different the AFD finish is? If you go to Sweetwater's website or something and look at all the different hues, there are some that are darker and there's some that are lighter. This is just a fantastic top though, I love it. It's also got a great rosewood fretboard on it, so this one is also on my website if you're interested in it. If I remember correctly, last time my AFD ended up having a ridiculously good weight, so I called it the Golden Child. That was like the first one to sell last time, so I'll post the weights on the ads. I'm sorry, it's mainly showing off new inventory for my shop today, but I do want to be clear, these are not brand new. They don't have any type of a warranty. I am not a Gibson dealer. I just appreciate a nice slash top when I see one. Well, here we go. This should be the one we're looking for. Is this the Anaconda Burst that needs to go to Alaska? Yes, it is. So here's a quick look at this one before I have to repack it up. It's got a pretty nice active top to it. This is another one of those colors that greatly varies example to example, but that's nice. But it does have a couple of scratches on the back here and the typical outline of the nut. So for a used guitar, it's not in too bad of condition. So let's go ahead and get this one packed up. 
And while packing guitars up, I got an order on Reverb for this cool thing. So in case you missed it, this is the Cosmic Space SG. It's not an actual factory finish. This is just somebody's art project that I was surprised when I first posted this on Instagram and on YouTube, all the comments were, I hate it. It's terrible. I could do so much better. Come on, guys. This is not that bad. I thought it was sweet. But as the video got more views, a lot more people agreed with me that this thing's awesome. And I totally did not expect it to last too long. I had some guys saying, oh, you should keep that for your collection. Well, here's the thing. This is a aftermarket paint job, so it doesn't really fit in my collection of, you know, one-off custom orders or historically significant guitars or telling the history of Gibson. But as a player, yeah, I would have kept this guitar. But I just don't get the chance to play guitar too much outside of, you know, recording the reviews and demos. Like, I still get to play almost every day during that process. It's just a little bit different when you're forced to record. But I'm glad this is going to a great home. He wanted to buy the Cosmic Stew SG, but he missed out on that one or it was just too expensive, so he was happy to pick this one up. And our last story for today actually ties in with Slash Models as well. So in that same episode, I also unboxed all the Epiphones. That was the whole point of that, to compare the visuals of the Epiphones to the Gibsons to see which one was worth it. And I had only sold one of those Epiphones. However, a couple months later, that same buyer reaches out to me and goes, you know what, I'd like to buy your other four ones because I enjoyed the buying experience and that guitar so much because he wants to keep them as a set for his collection because they were on the Trogolese unboxing show. <laughs> I worked a deal with him. He sent me a check so we could save some PayPal fees. But that is the story of the last of my Epiphone collection here. All right, Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode, seeing some beautiful guitars. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.